AI is able to essentially detect patterns um, in data sets and are able to make decisions based off those patterns. And they do this by essentially being trained on a bunch of different data, but you're probably wondering, okay, train, but what does that mean? So essentially what it means is it, it goes through different algorithms and models and it just relies on a lot of advanced mathematics to make decisions. And I find it very interesting. And I find it interesting to look at different models and algorithms that make this possible. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about the naive base um, algorithm or classifier algorithm. So Bayes theorem was first coined by a mathematician called Thomas Bayes, who essentially was able to determine a way of looking at an outcome and uh, kind of working backwards to determine a probability that a specific feature contributed to that outcome. And it's actually very interesting. And when you're kind of used to conditional probabilities and just normal probabilities, it's weird to like go backwards knowing the outcome because usually you're trying to find the prob probability of the outcome, but now you know it, so you're working backwards. And it's just like sort of hard to wrap your head around. But I feel like after you kind of hear di different examples, it starts to make sense. I wanted to provide an example, obviously, to make it make sense. So uh, a classic example is just looking at um, sort of this condition, this medical condition that we can call A. It's like medical condition A. And there's a test, but it's not super accurate. There's a chance that you'll get a false positive and a chance you'll get a false negative. And so if you know that you have the condition after the test, what is the probability that it was a false negative or a false positive? So in this case, we obviously know the outcome. You have the condition. But we're working backwards to see how a, a specific feature could have contributed to that outcome and the probability of that. So that's the, the premise of um, Bayes' theorem. And again, it is a little ter like hard to wrap your head around, I understand. Um, but overall, it is um, very interesting. So now let's jump into what the naive Bayes' theorem is, because it, it does slightly differ from the traditional Bayes' theorem. And the reason being is because the Bayes' theorem doesn't really take into account actual kind of real big applications of this because it doesn't, you're not able to take in a bunch of features at once, whereas the naive Bayes' theorem, we have to sort of switch it up a bit and actually consider a bunch of different features because realistically, when you're working with large data sets in a real application, there's going to be a lot of different features. So the math looks a little different and the theorem, the theorem, if you will, kind of slightly alters, which I'm going to show and explain right now. Okay, so as I mentioned, the reason why we can't use regular Bayes theorem is because it doesn't take into account the different attributes and features that are realistically present in data sets. So essentially what we can do is we can take those into account when we're creating this new theorem, if you will, quote unquote. And so essentially what we do is we have these list of attributes, let's call them A sub 1, A sub 2, all the way to A sub n, given V, uh, v sub j, and then we essentially just plug that into the regular Bayes theorem there, and we take the argumax of that, which essentially is a fancy way of saying we're going to look for the highest value here, which will obviously give us the highest probability and the highest um, likelihood. And using different rules and probability, we can actually separate this and multiply each of the um, the a sub i values, or so like a sub one, a sub two, all the attributes, and we can actually multiply each of those values um, given v sub j, and we can multiply that to um, probability of v sub j and that will actually work to kind of give those values that we're looking for so now we kind of have the basis of what the math is behind it but what is this naive part in front of the bayes theorem classifier here and the reason why we call it naive is because we make some naive assumptions <laughs> we make some assumptions that uh, we consider strong. So the, the major assumption that is made here is that the features are independent of the, the class that they belong to or the classifier. And it's considered a strong assumption because pretty much any data set you can think of doesn't kind of fall into this, uh, this I guess, assumption. <laughs> it kind of goes against it. Okay, so I know that's a lot of like fancy kind of like mumbo jumbo and it probably doesn't make a lot of sense. So kind of wanted to uh, give an example. Or I guess it's a classic example when you kind of look into naive Bayes uh, classifier. But if we look at sort of um, a spam just a detection in your email, um, what it does is it, it will scan through a bunch of words right in the email and sort of make a prediction whether or not it should be in the spam folder or whether or not it should uh, go directly into your main inbox. And the I guess the naive part of the classifier, when I say that 
or the class and the features are independent is essentially saying if we scan through this email, all the words don't really have a correlation with each other, which obviously does absolutely makes no sense because when we write words and a sentence and a phrase, um, oftentimes they have, there's a reason like one word follows another and there's sort of a correlation between the two words. So that is sort of the assumption that we make. And obviously for a lot of data sets, that is not the case. And it's actually quite interesting because even though this is such a strong assumption, the algorithm is actually very effective and it's used a lot in like medical uh, diagnosis for looking at images and whatnot for a lot of the NLP cases, like the one I just gave. It's very interesting to sort of um, I learn about this strong assumption and learning like, oh my God, this is bad. And then actually seeing how strong the algorithm is and how effective it is. So I, being the curious person I am, I was like, why is that? I was like, kind of like, oh, this is kind of cool, right? So what I did was I went through Google Scholar and I looked at a bunch of different papers. And the main thing I found was that if the dependencies either work together or cancel each other out, then there's no problem made and the class of error can work as if there was an assumption at all. And I thought that was also kind of interesting and it was a little bit hard for me to wrap my head around. But what I found was relative values are sort of what drive the classification um, for the naive Bayes theorem and are strong enough to make those, uh, I guess, those classifications and those predictions. So yeah, so this was the, sort of the math behind naive Bayes theorem. Um, I really hope you enjoy this video. If you have any questions, please leave them down below. Uh, thank you all for watching. Uh, make sure to subscribe if you love math and you want to see more. So thank you.